Have a good night. All right, Thank and you. thanks to you at home for joining us this hour. Rachel has the night off. There is so much going on tonight. I hope your seatbelts are duly buckled. We have the latest news and reaction to the controversial immigration policy unveiled by the White House today. We also have late breaking news on big changes at the National Security Council and the major change the president might make to the war in Afghanistan. And Senator Cory Booker is here live tonight to talk about Jeff Sessions' least favorite thing. I'll leave it to you to guess what that might be. But we begin tonight with some of the very early response from the administration to the Russian meddling in our election last year. The Obama administration, that is. You, rem you may remember at his final end of year press conference in December of last year, President Barack Obama laid out a series of steps on how the U.S. should respond to Russian interference in the 2016 race. Our goal continues to be to send a clear message to Russia or others not to do this to us because we can do stuff to you. Uh, but it is also important for us to do that in a thoughtful, methodical way. Some of it we do publicly. Some of it uh, we will do in a way that they know, but not everybody will. How we approach uh, an appropriate response that uh, increases costs for them for behavior like this in the future, but does not create problems for us uh, is something that's worth taking the time to think through and figure out. And that's exactly what we've done. That night, the president and his family departed Washington for his final presidential vacation. President Obama and his family spent their two-week Christmas break in Hawaii. And while there was plenty of relaxing and downtime, the president also spent part of his time working. Specifically, while he was still in Hawaii, he signaled the annual defense, he signed the annual defense spending bill, known as the National Defense Authorization Act, into law. The bill outlined Pentagon spending priorities for the fiscal year, including a 2.1% pay increase for the troops. But also tucked within that law was a bipartisan measure from Senators Rob Portman of Ohio and Chris Murphy of Connecticut called the Countering Disinformation and Propaganda Act. What it did was it broadened the mission of the State Department's Global Engagement Center. The Global Engagement Center is a unit within the State Department with a staff of roughly 80 employees. The center had previously been responsible for countering propaganda by terrorist groups like ISIS online. Things like seeding anti-ISIS videos into the social media feeds of people who seemed curious about joining up. The new law signed by President Obama expanded that State Department mission to countering not just ISIS propaganda online, but also countering state-sponsored disinformation campaigns, state-sponsored disinformation campaigns by countries like Russia. The law gave the State Department nearly $80 million to fight ISIS propaganda and state-sponsored disinformation campaigns like the one just executed by the Russian government against our election. And while this didn't make a lot of headlines over here, in Russia, they certainly noticed. After we signed the bill into law, Sputnik, a Russian state-controlled news agency, ran this story with the headline, Obama establishes propaganda agency under guise of fighting fake news. Quote, the act establishes <clears throat> an anti-propaganda center, which many have noted frighteningly resembles George Orwell's Ministry of Truth from his seminal novel, 1984. That was back in December. Now, with Rex Tillerson at the helm of the State Department, the past few months have been full of daily headlines about a hollowing out of the department under his watch. That concern led Senator Rob Portman to use a hearing last month with Rex Tillerson's deputy, John Sullivan, to inquire whether the State Department was indeed committed to adequate resourcing for the Global Engagement Center and its mission to target propaganda coming from Russia. The Global Engagement Center, as you know, it's something that I feel strongly about. And we, in 2017, as a Senate and a House uh, in the National Defense Authorization Act, asked the Global Engagement Center to take on additional responsibilities, specifically with regard to disinformation coming from countries intended to destabilize democracies, uh, undermine some of our basic values and institutions. So my question for you is, is there um, an ability to keep some of these important entities like the Global Engagement Center specifically uh, from being weakened by a hiring freeze or um, other reorganizations that could uh, lead to it having a more difficult time carrying out its important responsibilities. 
With respect to the Global Engagement Center, it is a priority for Secretary Tillerson. It's something that's uh, an important part of our, our mission for all the reasons you state. An important part of our mission. Well, as it happens, today, the current president reluctantly signed a bipartisan bill into law, imposing new sanctions on Russia while also limiting his own executive authority to diminish or remove them. The signing came one day after Secretary of State Rex Tillerson told reporters that both he and the president were very unhappy with the sanctions bill handed to them by Congress. Now, the action by the, by the uh, Congress to put these sanctions in place and the way they did uh, neither the president nor I are very happy about that. Uh, we were clear that we didn't think it was going to be helpful to our efforts, but that's the decision they made. Now, we're used to conspicuous Oval Office signing ceremonies from this president when it comes to executive orders and the few small, non-controversial pieces of legislation that have reached his desk. Well, today we got none of that. Instead, we got a signing statement from the current president calling the sanctions bill significantly flawed and containing a number of clearly unconstitutional provisions. More ominously, he warned that while he would give, quote, careful and respectful consideration to the preferences expressed by the Congress, he would implement them in a manner consistent with the president's constitutional authority to conduct foreign relations. Well, that drew the attention of top Senate leaders in both parties. The top Democrat in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, said that the statement shows Congress needs to keep a sharp eye on this administration, while John McCain said he hoped the president will be as vocal about Russian aggression as he was about his concerns with the bill. But today, we also got another warning sign about the administration's response to Russian meddling. This one involves the aforementioned Global Engagement Center, created by President Obama at the State Department you know, the one designed to counter Russian propaganda. Just hours before Donald Trump signed the sanctions bill, Politico reported that in a highly unusual move, Rex Tillerson is rejecting that $80 million in funds set aside by Congress to counter Russia's state-sponsored disinformation campaign. The move is reportedly angering State Department officials. According to a senior State Department official, Tillerson aide R.C. Hammond suggested the money is unwelcome because any extra funding for programs to counter Russian media influence would anger Moscow. The official continued, quote, Hammond said the secretary is in the process of working through disagreements with Russia, and this is not consistent with what we're trying to do. Joining us now is the author of that scoop, political foreign affairs correspondent, Nahal Tusi. And Nahal, thank you so much for being here. What uh, is the State Department, I guess, is explaining that they don't want to take this money, which has already been allocated for Congress, by Congress, because they don't want to anger Moscow. Is that really their reason for not taking the money? Well, that's one of the reasons that they were, that people have been given uh, as to why Rex Tillerson has not yet tapped this money. Most of the money right now is based at the Pentagon, about $60 million of it. And it expires on September 30th, the end of the fiscal year. And we've also been told other reasons. You know, Tillerson wants to shrink the department. He wants to reorganize the department. And there's some questions as to whether uh, this center uh, fits in with his vision. But the Russia angle is also there, too. And so it's very unclear what's going to happen, because if they don't get that $60 million over from the Pentagon soon, it's going to be gone. And has there been any pushback from Republicans in Congress beyond uh, what we've heard um, to say, wait a minute, you're turning down money to counter ISIS propaganda and also Russian propaganda? You know, what are Republicans saying about that? Well, today, Senator Rob Portman, who is a Republican from Ohio, uh, released a statement basically blasting Tillerson and urging him to go ahead and tap this money. Uh, so that's a sign that there are definitely some Republicans uh, who want the U.S. to try to counter Russian disinformation in the best way that it can. And of course, you also had some Democrats speaking out, including Chris Murphy of Connecticut and Ben Cardin of Maryland. Uh, so, you know, it's something that is of concern. And, and the, as the sanctions bill shows, there's tremendous bipartisan support support uh, for punching back against Russia for their alleged uh, meddling in our election. So it's it's hard to believe that this is going to go on, uh, go down well with Republicans or Democrats. Yeah, it's interesting because there are so many sort of optical things that this administration seems to get wrong if they're trying to distance themselves from this idea of Russian collusion or, or, or an undue Russian affinity. I mean, you had today the statements that the Trump administration and the Kremlin putting out about the bill that Donald Trump very belatedly signed, the sanctions bill, being really similar, Mother Joe 
Jones noted that they, they sounded kind of the same. And then there was the fact that you had Dmitry Medvedev, uh, who is the prime minister of Russia, kind of trolling the administration and calling them weak, putting out a tweet in which he said the Trump administration has shown its total weakness by handing over executive power to Congress in the most humiliating way. I get why Russia would want to do that, to sort of go the administration into doing more to, you know, stand up for making the relations better. How does the State Department explain itself when it does look like they're being trolled by Russia and following Russia's lead? Well, this is one of the interesting things. I mean, the State Department has been uh, hollowed out to such a degree. There are uh, so many positions that are left open or they're being filled on a temporary basis. And Secretary Tillerson as a whole has just taken a much lower profile in general. So the fact that he even issued a statement or talked to reporters at all and even discussed Russia in any sort of way is kind of news. And so in many ways, the Russians uh, have the upper hand on the narrative uh, when it comes to this sort of thing. And that's I think part of the reason people really want this engagement center uh, to get up and running and go after the Russians on some of this stuff is because they feel like the U.S. needs to gain control of the narrative again. But then, of course, there's this ongoing mystery of the, uh, the relationship between the Russian government and the Trump administration in general, and that everybody is still trying to unravel to see if there's anything there. And who knows? I mean, there's a lot of things that I think we don't know yet, and we're all picking away at it, and we might find out some additional uh, really eye-opening stuff in the future. Yeah, we might, uh, and usually through leaks. That's the way it's been happening so far. Nahal Tusi, <laughs> Politico Foreign Affairs Correspondent. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, did you see this White House briefing today on immigration? Did you get a chance to look at it? Uh, we could not stop watching it. Everyone I know is talking about it. Well, it turns out the same Trump advisor has been working on those same ideas for years and years. That story's next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.